Welcome to Learn More. In the previous lesson, we learned about educational psychology, the scope of educational psychology, and we looked at the concepts, um, concepts, more of the concepts that are involved in educational psychology. So, um, if you, if you, um, got the video of the last lesson and you have questions regarding what we learned in the last lesson you can send us um a mail on our gmail or you can also reply the chat box so now we are looking at the techniques to educational psychology at the end of this lesson um the learners should be able to state the techniques to educational psychology and state factors that affect the learners you should be able to tell us the techniques to educational psychology and you should be able to let us know the factors that affect the affect the learners. So let's look at the techniques to educational psychology. According to Lindgren, 1996, as cited in Shuhan 2007, there are three elements or focal areas in education that concerns educational psychologists and teacher. So according to these two people there are three elements of vocal areas in education that concerns education psychologists and teachers so these are the three areas that the teachers will always look into educational psychologists would always look into um you know who educational psychologist is i i think you should know who an educational psychologist is by now an educational psychologist is a practicing educational psychologist someone that is practicing it someone that um does that for ease or a livelihood someone that brings in solution to education that brings in solution to to education and this person studies um this person needs to have good knowledge of psychology because you are bringing in psychological theory and principle to solve problems in education so now we are saying that there are three elements of vocal areas in education that concerns educational psychologists and teachers and they are the learner the learning process and the learning situation so we're looking at these three these three um elements one after the other the, le the learner Number one is the learner. The learner is the most important element in education that is of the most concern to educational psychologists. The learner, the learner is the most important element that has a direct, that, that is consigned directly by the educational psychologists. That is the, edu the educational psychologists has a very big um, concern about the learner. The major concern of the educational psychologist is the learner. In fact, most of most of the um, solutions that the educational psychologist would bring into the um, education is to affect and is to improve the quality of the learners. So the learners, the they, they are the most important element in education. This is because both learning process and learning situation will only take place when there is a learner. So um, among the three among the three um, elements I listed, we have the learner, we have the learning process, and we have the learning situation. Now, without the learner, there would not be any learning process. Without the learner, there won't be any learning situation. So since the learner is very, very important for um, both the process of learning and the situation of learning to take place, then the learner is one very important key amongst the three elements. Now, who is a learner? A learner is a person that makes himself available to a learning situation. 
and he brings himself to to the conditioning of the teacher so the learner takes instruction from the teacher and conditions himself to the atmosphere or the environment of the learning situation so whatever the environment used to be like the learner will just have to condition himself to that environment so that he could be able to learn i remember then when we were um learning um we were, we were doing our nc that was in our nc days then we know sometimes we need to climb um some staircase of about two three story building to get to a class and you know and learn <laughs> it sounds funny but we have to condition ourselves to that learning situation we have to condition ourselves to that learning environment nobody would say um hello this um this building is so tall we we i don't think um i don't think we have to learn today you know we have to look for some we have to look for another building you know you as a learner you won't say that in fact you have to get there before the before the instructor before the lecturer because most of them when you get there before sorry when they get there before you then you're not ready for the class so the learner makes every um thing possible makes everything possible to be available in the learning environment and condition himself you see most times learning is not it, it, learning does not really look um it does not really look sweet you know you have to go through some series of testing you have some assignment to submit you have um some classwork to do sometimes you may not be very very um comfortable coming to school but you just have to do that you know sometimes you have examination and you know there are so many things that and the learner needs to consider the learner needs to consider actually in our time there are many things you should consider you know in recent days now learning is now becoming fun where you can learn at home you have your smartphone you have your laptops you have learning devices you can just go there on one click you get the you get the learning and you learn <laughs> when these technologies has not been put into education you know how it looks like so we are just talking about the learner we are we are looking at the learner so the learner must condition himself to the learning situation and the learning environment everything it takes to learn the learner has to just forfeit that to learn so and i also said that don't forget the learner is the most important ele element in education is the most important element so let's go to number two now so number two among the elements is the learning process the learning process the learning process refers to all the direct and indirect behaviors action and reaction that people embark upon when they learn the learning process refers to all the direct and indirect behaviors actions and reaction that people embark upon when they learn that the learners embark upon when they learn the learning process includes reading writing calculating attending lectures taking an observation you know those um behaviors and manners that you do when you learn you know when you are reading when you are learning you are directly you are reading is either you are reading a book you are trying to answer questions you are writing you are calculating you need to attend classes and so on so some other behaviors which are not directly observable includes thinking remembering identifying processing imagining so most of these things most of these behaviors sorry they are some of the behaviors that are encountered in learning when we learn most time we think we think for the solution we think for a formula we try to remember we try to identify things we try to process information in our brain we try to imagine how things look like sometimes when um the teacher is trying to explain a concept to you but you are not you are not getting it you just you just try to imagine how it looks like in your brain and you know what the, what the teacher is trying to say you know these learning behaviors 
they are encountered in learning and all of them they are what we call the learning process so so the learning process we have looked we have looked at the learning process the number three is the learning situation the learning situation the learning situation refers to all and the, the learning situation refers to any environment of the learner where the learning takes place the learning situation it refers to factors that affect the learner and the learning process this is where heredity factors are subject to the environment heredity factors are subject to the environment you need to look at that last sentence very well this is where hereditary factors are subject to the environment we have heredity there we also have environment now the learning situation refers to the environment of the learner where the learning takes place wherever the learning takes place that place is the learning situation wherever the learning takes place it is the learning situation um, some people learn in the class some people learn outside the class some people learn under the mango tree but they all are in school some people learn in the lecture hall some people learn on their phone some people learn with laptops you know these people uh, they have different learning environments different learning situation now the more better your learning environment the more better your learning might be you won't um consider someone that never saw the light electricity electric light to people that uses electric light to learn you know at least the person has understood that there is something called electric light so that alone is bringing is giving the person an edge over others so the learning situa situation is very very paramount also in learning let's look at factors that affect the learners factors that affect the learners the factors that affect the learners are number one the teacher the teacher the teacher is a trained certified and licensed person who is meant to impact knowledge the teacher is trained he is certified and licensed person meant to impart knowledge this include the attitude the behavior the personality of the teacher or instructor teacher affects the learner by impacting the learner with skills and competencies needed for productivity in the case where the teacher is not trained and qualified or do not have the competence the competencies and skill to teach then the learner will be adversely affected so i pity learners that they have teachers that they could not really teach very well they are not trained they are not satisfied they just they just come to teach because maybe because they needed money or um that's their job you know there are some teachers like that so um it's very very good we um good it's very good we get some um, teachers who are trained who are qualified to impact knowledge so that we can have the best of the learning wherever we have so the factors that affect the learners include the teacher so when the teacher is not trained is not certified is not licensed i don't know how the teacher could be able to deliver a very good appropriate learning i don't think it could be possible so the second factor that affects the learner is the class setting the class setting design and structured place which allows for learning and where learning takes place the class includes the lighting the, the ventilation the convenience the decoration the class affects the learner by pro by providing a conducive learning atmosphere i told you before that some people learn in the class under the tree you know wherever Many people learn in so many places, but the, a class setting is one key place where we learn. We know that when you are going to class, you are going to learn. But in a situation where the class, it's not even um, up to standard. It's not up to, up to, it's not well structured in a way that learning could um, effectively take place there. You know, the learning is now thwarted. The class setting affects the learner by providing a conducive learning atmosphere. When the class setting is not conducive enough for learning, the learners will be adversely affected. So we have looked at the teacher, 
when we don't have trained we don't have qualified teachers we don't have certified teachers then the learners are in trouble when we don't have good classroom we don't have good class setting also the learners are in trouble then number three is the school environment these are the factors that affect that affect the learners the factors that affect the learners number three the school environment the school environment is the whole structure and components that makes up the school the whole structure the whole components that makes up the school this, this includes the ability of teaching materials classroom laboratory teaching aids and instructional materials the teaching environment the overall environment of the teaching not just um, the playground alone or where the um, the classes the structure of the classroom the structure of the of, of, of the school no not just the environment where the where the um, student can go to play you know not just the, to the toilet the facilities of the school no but every other facilities be the classroom the laboratory the teaching aid the instructional materials the teaching materials both the the teachers these um constitute the school environment the whole structure and component that makes up the school every structure and component that makes up the school is the school environment now when the school environment is not ideal for learning then it could also affect the learners then the next number number four is the community a community refers to a group of people who live together in a specific geographical area a community refers to a group of people who live together in a specific geographical area a community refers to specific geographical structure where a group of people reside with a unified aim and interest the attitude of community towards education has a direct effect on the learners. In a community where they do not they do not agree, they they they, they don't love education, then the learners may not get um, quality education there. So the community is one other key, that factor that affects the learners. So in summary, we have learned about the techniques to educational psychology and the factors that affect the learners. The techniques, we, we looked at the learner, we looked at the learning situation, and we also looked at the learning process. So um, we also looked at the factors that affect the learners. We talked about the community, the teachers, the, the teach and the class setting, the class setting. So these are factors that affect the learners these are factors that affect the learners in the next lesson we'll be learning about the importance of educational psychology to teacher education it could also be the importance of educational psychology to pre-service teacher yeah it could be to pre-service teacher to teacher education in general but we are looking at it the importance of educational psychology to teacher education we want to know what is the importance of educational psychology to teacher education so um before before we um before we are done for this lesson i would want you to try share share link share videos to your colleagues so that they can be carried along in the lesson and if you miss the previous lessons go to our facebook page um go to our youtube handle you can find our lessons there you can get them and um, utilize them see you in the next lesson God walked and talked with them in the garden, and there was no suffering, no oppression, and no death. God told Adam, you may eat of all the trees in the garden, except from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
If you eat fruit from that tree, you will die. But one day, Satan tempted Eve. She picked the fruit and took a bite. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Adam and Eve's shameful act of disobedience destroyed the harmony of the garden. The harmony between the man and the woman, and the harmony between them and God. A man was cursed to a life of painful toil, and the woman to increased hardship in childbirth, and to be ruled over by her husband. But God also gave a promise that someday the seed of the woman, her own offspring, would crush the snake's head. In the Holy Scriptures, God the Compassionate speaks of a plan to restore harmony and honor to his creation.